Hey everybody, you're watching Ohm Sweet Ohm on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Everybody. Welcome to Ohm Sweet Ohm. I'm yoga instructor Allison Schuster and today we are filming the series finale of Ohm Sweet Ohm. It is our last episode. So I had to have a very special guest today. I've got my good buddy Ian Smith here from Surf's Up Adventures. Hi Ian. Hello. I am so honored to be on the series finale. Thanks for having us. We are glad you are here. Now you were one of my first guests on the show. You are a fan favorite. Right? You've been here a couple times <laughs> talking. Um, but we have a lot to talk about today. Because it's the last show, I wanted it to be a topic that is near and dear to my heart, which everybody knows I love yoga, but a lot of you also know I'm a paddleboard instructor and I love to teach SUP yoga, love to be on the water, um, whether it's here in Western PA or anywhere in the world, I love the water. So we're going to talk a little bit about all of that today. But let's, let's back it up first. So in case they didn't see you, okay. before on Ohm Sweet Ohm, let's talk about Surf's Up Adventures and what it is that you do. Sure, sure. Well, that sounds good. Let's get into it. Uh, Surf's Up Adventures is a paddleboarding outfitter that we started at Marine State Park way back in 2011. So it's, we're coming to the end of our 11th season here. Um, and we, we just focus on giving people amazing experiences out in the water. So we do paddleboarding trips, we do amazing SUP yoga classes like, uh, like the ones that you teach with us. And then we also teach some crazy things like whitewater paddleboarding where we take people down rapids uh, and we do some river surfing as well. So we find waves like we have on the Connie behind us and uh, just give people uh, really unique experiences out there. People are always amazed when I say that, that, that you can surf PA. Right? Yeah, 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 I know. It's kind of weird. Surf PA. Not only here, but also, you know, up at the Great Lakes, of course, yeah. we have Erie that's not far away, and you can surf Erie, but you can surf right here on the Conequinessing, which is behind us today. That's right, yeah. And, and that's amazing. It is. It's, it's really cool. And yeah, surfing the Great Lakes, it's actually a growing thing. And yeah, Pennsylvania's only coastline is, is right up there on Lake Erie. Um, but yeah, like on Conequinessing, when you get enough rain and there's areas where the water constricts and goes over these rocks in certain ways where it makes waves that um, are really similar to ocean waves, but they don't move. So essentially you're riding the power of the river as it's kind of propelling you in place. So it's called a standing wave. Um, yeah, that's Which how we do it here. Some people might see that, a lot of people see the, the standing wave concept uh, maybe on a cruise ship or at a resort yeah. where they have kind of the flume going where you can you can ride it but this is the natural version yeah exactly exactly so so similar concept but yeah you're in nature and you have all those beautiful you know kind of environment surrounding you and yeah learning to harness that power has been uh, yeah it's a really fun thing that's what that, that's what initially got me addicted to uh, stand up paddleboarding and river surfing and this whole crazy thing, so. And a lot of people have discovered it, and we've noticed over the past year, um, because 2020 was kind of the year people stayed home. Yeah, right? yeah. That we've noticed a lot of people have discovered paddleboarding. Yes. But I, I see a lot of people going out on paddleboards that might need a little training. Yeah, right? that yeah. That might need a lesson or two. Absolutely. Um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about that. When we, we take a tour out, what do we teach them? Yeah, yeah. So the emphasis is making sure that everyone's going to enjoy the sport and get the most that they can out of it. So for some people, it might be really simple and, you know, they're, they're on it and cruising right away. And then we can show them beautiful parts of the lake, teach them some tricks on the board. That's always a fun thing. Uh, but for some people, just learning to stand up and kind of get comfortable around the water, that's sort of the big focus. So I want to make sure that it's very inclusive and that anyone that wants to try the sport can get involved in it. So the focus is making sure they're comfortable standing up. And that's kind of what we specialize in is you know even if you think you have bad balance or you don't think you have the physicality to try it um, we're gonna make it work for you so I've got boards that are nice and stable uh, we've got a great location at Moraine State Park and uh, that's kind of our focus and, and there's a lot of boards yeah right? there's yeah. a fleet of boards so they don't have to provide their own equipment right yeah which is also a wonderful thing so you're trying it for the first time you can just show up and 
jump on a board. You yeah. don't have to bring your own board, your own equipment, your your paddle, your life vest, all of those things. I yep. think a lot of people enjoy having that done for them. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, <laughs> right. I like Sur Surf's Up Adventures. We, we like to think of ourselves as the hotel that puts the chocolate pil on your pillow. That's you know? right, that's you, right. You show up and we got the best boards, the best paddles, uh, life jackets, all the safety equipment needed. So yeah, you just show up, we show you where to kick off your shoes and we're heading out. It's that's setting it. you up for success. Yeah, exactly. Really. You know, if you're gonna succeed at this, this is the way you're gonna do it. Absolutely, right? yeah. Now, but beyond that, it's, it's a little bit more than that. So yes, we teach them to paddleboard. Yeah. Right, and you have a, an athletic skill. I mean, certainly there are so many benefits to that. But I think what you do adds a different element with the eco tours is you teach them about the lake. Yeah, exactly. So I love these natural areas where we're at. We don't just pick a random spot, you know, just for the, for the sake of wherever it is. Um, we want to take people to places that are really amazing and, and beautiful from an environmental perspective. So yeah, at our eco tours at Moraine, for example, um, we take you along uh, the Hidden River Canoe Trail and the Glacier Ridge Trail. So you get to be, see some beautiful rock formations, uh, beautiful wildlife. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of birding. And we wanna kind of give you an experience that takes you beyond just paddleboarding. So we want you to take away, uh, you know, a, a better appreciation for nature uh, and a more of an appreciation for those specific spots. And that changes, we have, day tours, but then we also take people out yeah, at night yeah, the on the night glow sets. Yes, yeah, that, that's been a really fun thing. We have um, LED lighting that goes underneath the boards. So we take you out at about sunset, we enjoy the sunset, and then as the night sets in over the lake, we, uh, we turn on the LED lights and it kind of illuminates the water beneath you. So you get to see a whole nother element, all the nocturnal creatures that are attracted to the light, um, and just kind of cruise along the shallows and see what's out there. And that, that's a, a really unique perspective and um, something that a lot of people don't get to see. So and a different world. I mean, yeah. the rain is a different world when the sun goes down yep. than it is during the day. Yeah, very true, very totally true. Totally different inhabitants, totally different um, situation, which is really interesting. And then really we enjoy the four seasons. Now, yeah. not everybody would enjoy four season <laughs> paddle boarding as much as you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I can at least get three in there, right? right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I can get three in there. The winter ones, that's a little bit um, more challenging, but getting to see nature change through the seasons yes. is wonderful. You and I were on the lake yesterday, Yeah. right? And just seeing the leaves just start to change, I mean, it just is beautiful. I love it, right? yeah. Again, it's a different world depending on what season you're in. Exactly. Um, so those tours keep on going. Yeah, we, we start pretty early in the spring and um, a lot of people think like this time of year that, you know, after Labor Day, the water's gonna be cold, but actually it's still really nice. You know, it's still warm water as you felt yesterday. Um, and once you're out there seeing the leaves changing and the ferns back in the, you know, kind of the creeks and things like that, it's a, yeah, that's my, actually my favorite time, even though everyone, it's a more popular in the summer, but I love the fall. I love the fall. And yeah, and even spring can be amazing. And then like you said, I like to paddle in the winter. I know I'm not going to coerce too many people into that, but if you've got the right suit <laughs> awesome. and yeah, it can say, be. It's more of a gear issue. It is. Really? It is. It's not, it's not the cold. You just need the good gear. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I think my friend Lindsay Petras, uh, her, her mom said to me one time that there's no such thing as bad weather, just poor equipment. Yes. So that's if, very true. If, if you've got the gear, you can make it happen. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this time of year, Western PA just shines. The it fall, does. we all look forward to the fall and the beauty of the fall in Western PA. So yeah. it, it's fun that you can see that from the water mm -hmm. in four different seasons. Yeah. So it, it's more than just learning to paddleboard, but it's learning to appreciate nature around you. Yeah. Right? Now, okay, so then you took it from there as a commercial enterprise, right? And introducing people to it. Then you decided, well, let's teach this to kids right yeah. and that's where first waves comes in yeah so tell yeah. me a little bit about first waves yeah and we appreciate everything you guys have done to you know kind of volunteer um first first waves is basically a program i started in 2014 and the idea for that was to get underserved youth and special needs groups that don't usually have the opportunity to have those experiences or to get on the water and give them a chance to do that. So we, we take out you know, people from uh, urban settings that don't usually get outside um, and even remote places like uh, Cambria County where there's not a lot of access or a lot of, a lot of education programming. And we give the kids an, a great experience, whether it's river surfing, which is way outside of a lot of people's elements uh, or just a day on the lake. And then we also couple that with filmmaking uh, workshops. So we teach them how to kind of document their experience. And then lastly, we, uh, we, we teach them about the conservation projects. So how to do uh, tree plantings, for example, um, how to do, take water samples and kind of analyze that. 
And um, that, that's sort of the goal behind the program. And then it culminates with them making a film about it at the end. So they get to edit it together. Which is an awesome feeling of confidence. I mean, yeah. we love the feeling of putting kids on boards so that we get that confidence. Yeah. And it is, even for adults too, we yes. get that confidence of being on the boards. But being able to create something from that day right. It is tremendous. Yeah, it is really cool. And we have a lot of volunteers and mentors that come and they kind of help the kids get comfortable on the water. And then at the end of the program, the coolest time is when all the kids finally finish their videos and we get to screen them on the screen and they get to kind of present their project and present what they're doing. It's like a red carpet It moment. is awesome. Yeah, that's, is that's, really awesome. That's, that's become my favorite moment of First Waves is just seeing the kids be able to present something and how proud they get of it, you know, and they really open up. You know, we, we let them do like kind of a selfie moment where they kind of talk about how the experience maybe, you know, impacted them or what they liked the most about it, what was the scariest moment. And you kind of get that like closer look inside, you know, because sometimes they're very shy in the beginning and they don't necessarily want to do it. Um, and then that kind of culminates in the end. So that's sort of my favorite time. That's awesome. And, and that's been growing. Yeah, the yeah. The last few years where you've seen that grow. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of interest in that. And let's talk about that for a minute. There's a lot of interest in water conservation. Yes. And we have seen the change, and you can maybe speak to this, of what you have seen in the past 10 years on the waterways yeah. right here in Western PA. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of great watershed conservation movements and organizations you know, throughout Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. Um, Allegheny Aquatic Alliance is one great one that I can think of that's uh, cleaned up you know, tons, hundreds of tons, thousands of, of pounds of debris and litter from uh, watersheds just like the Conoquinesson Creek that we're standing on the banks of right now. Um, so it's been amazing to kind of watch that movement and kind of ride that. And it, it's great because something like First Waves uh, works with all those groups and kind of brings them together to add value uh, and find ways that we can kind of contribute together. So that has been cool. And it, it has been amazing to kind of see like at some First Waves events, we actually saw a, a coal spill um, in the Stony Creek River before our eyes. The kids were just about to put on the water um, and the water turned black. So it was a, a coal event that happened in uh, the Laurel Highlands region. And, you know, watching the kids' expression of that and having them actually document it uh, led to, you know, the DEP investigating and things like that. So, you know, these things make a difference if you're out there to experience it. And the people that are out riding the rivers, those are the only ones that are really going to, you know, take note. So, right. yeah, it's been interesting to kind of see those changes happen and, you know, to make some small part in, uh, you know, in, in change. And hopefully that'll continue in the future. And I think when you start riding those waves and you become a part of yeah. nature and you are invested in it. So I think yes. that's why we believe that the more people we get on the paddle boards, the more yeah. people we get out to the water, the more people that are going to protect it. Yeah, very true. Right? Yeah. Because it, it really doesn't take much, whether it's, you know, making sure the trash is, is properly um, stowed right after your camping trip or after your outing or even looking at water quality which is something yeah. First Waves kids gets to experience of how do we test for water quality how do we know that the water is safe right. and clean um, I think those things become important to adults as well yeah. right and that's a new way for us to experience it if we're riding those waves every day right, right? yeah yeah you definitely become emotionally invested, uh, physically invested whenever you take that step. And, you know, it is an adventure sport, so you're going to be taking some swims. Um, and of course, nobody wants to swim in dirty water. No, so yeah, no. why not contribute to making it cleaner? And to see the marine biology return. I know you and I love the Allegheny. Yeah. And we love the islands of Oakmont. And to see all of the animals there flourish yeah. now um, it is amazing. It is. Right? Yeah. And we see it grow every year. And that river has changed so much from when I was a kid, right? Right, um, that it is so much cleaner, and and really a wonderful ecosystem. Yeah, it is. It's cool. And th there's always been that stigma. You know, we're in Butler County now, but these programs we we take we do them in a, a number of places. And Pittsburgh is the first place that we did it. We took urban youth from the Pittsburgh area, where the stigma around getting even close to the Allegheny River or the Ohio River is sort of a you know a no no. Um, and we want to change that. We want to shift that paradigm to one where people can recreate with it, they can interact with it, they can understand what the real risks are um, and where the improvements need to be made. So, and there's a lot of organizations doing similar things, but um, yeah, things like First Ways are a, a way for the, the kids and the youth in particular to kind of get that firsthand experience there. For someone that doesn't have any idea how to start in this, yeah. um, what do you watch for when, you're, when you are in your canoe? when you're in your kayak, 
um, a lot of people probably don't know what does safe water look like. Yeah, yeah, and you can't always tell. You know, that's why it's great to have you know organizations that put on sojourns and take people out on the river and kind of do education programs around that. So that's a great way to do it. And of course, it's going to change whether you have you know a, a, an engulfed area like a lake or a, an open body of water like a river or a stream behind us. Um, and kind of understanding every local area has you know different risks and different precautions that you have to take. Um, but yeah, getting involved with like local outfitters in the in that specific area is usually the best way to do it. And there's a lot of cleanup activities. Yeah, those are join, fun. Right? Yes. And we love that. We yeah. love taking the kids to do that on the Allegheny or even up at Moraine. And it's not just when you think of that, people think, oh, you're pulling trash out of the river. Right. And yes, maybe. Yeah. Right. But it also has been at Moraine clearing trees, clearing right. brush. Yeah. Um, we saw them yesterday fixing up the North Country Trail. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. They, they, uh, shout out to the North Country Trail Association yeah, that was yeah. cleaning up the uh, yeah the trail and the bridge over the Hidden River, which is great. Right, and uh, weather factors in. We it get does. trees down. We get you know all of the things that may block a waterway yep. or, or cause problems in a waterway, and and that's part of the cleanup as well. Yeah, for sure. And that fosters the community to kind of rally around each other and you know it forms friendships that you don't really find in a lot of places you like find it's your uh, people. yeah you find your right? people you find right your people so all of the paddle boarders <laughs> are up there doing it as well as yeah. kayakers and fishermen and, and all of the people that uh, come together on the water I think it is a great place to meet that's people. so true yeah that's so true I've met some of the the greatest friends on the river you whether it's randomly just kind of sitting on the bank and someone you know cruises down through on a raft and says hello and you just kind of start to chat that's and it. you have that natural affinity for the same environment so I think it's just a you know a great a great way to just kind of initiate that conversation. And it really does shift our perspective to change to being um, the keepers of the garden, right? Yeah, the, to yeah. being the ones that are looking after it and knowing that um, you are helping move it. It's not just that it's moving you. Yeah. Uh, and I think that makes a big difference. And I've I've seen a lot of people kind of shift to that with the yeah. year that they stayed home yeah, right, and yeah. got out. We've seen a lot more people enjoying our parks and enjoying um, locations like Moraine yeah. right? and, and other places in the area, McConnell's Mills, all the places that we love to see that water and being able to learn to protect it and enjoy it, not only safely for us, but safe for everything that's around us, yeah. whether it's the plant life, the animals. Um, our water quality because our water quality that we drink is tied to this as well. It is. Yeah, that's true. And we saw that with first waves where, you know, in certain years in the early, you know, the beginning, um, you know, I would be kind of rolling into town and looking for kids on the street to ask if they wanted to kind of come and take part. You <laughs> know, you had, to, yeah, you had to kind of <laughs> convince them to do it. And, uh, you know, after, you know, all the things that have happened, I think people put a little bit more uh, weight on outdoor activities and the chance to learn in an outdoor setting. So um, this year we had programs in uh, Cambria County, uh, Greater Johnstown and Pittsburgh, and all of them had record participation from the youth. So, um, you know, it was great to just kind of show up and see all these kids just kind of ready to go, putting on the wetsuits, putting on the helmets um, and charging it. Yeah, ready it's, to take part. it's and, amazing. And that gives us a lot of hope for the future. Yeah, it because does. I think it does. Younger generations are really taking charge. Yes. Um, of our water and our water quality. Yes. And they want the best for themselves and for all of us and i think that once we embrace that natural world we just run with it yeah no right? that's so true everybody's starting to learn like oh my goodness health and wellness is not so hard yeah getting outside is a big first step it is it's right? a great it's a great way to do it and yeah and you know not only are the kids out there you know kind of having that first experience but now we get to watch their films they kind of exist in perpetuity so they're inspiring other people saying oh my goodness that looks so much fun uh, I, I want to try it. it. Yeah. Try it. So I that's do it. that's the purpose. You know, if they can make the film about it, it's not just that one moment in time. It's going to keep going and it's going to spiral out. It's influence other people, um, and they get to showcase also the trees that they planted. That uh, you know, in conjunction with people like Tree Pittsburgh, now those trees are going to be in a park setting and they're going to be there. They could maybe even show you know their kids or their friends in 20, 30, 40 years that they took part in uh, you know creating that. So right. that's and pretty exciting. Something. Yeah. yeah. Again. It, it not only gives you the confidence that you have the power to change and create something, but then you're giving it to somebody else. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's Which true. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's just shift gears to your personal life just for a moment, <laughs> because I think we need to give a shout out to somebody. I believe you're getting married. I am. I am. I'm getting married in a couple months, November 5th. Yeah. That's that, awesome. if, if Megan's watching. Hello. Hope We're going to say yeah, hi. Yeah. Right? We'll say hi. Yeah, excited about that. 
that's awesome. Big shift there. But then what's up next for Surf's Up Adventures? Yeah, so we're going to continue to work at Moraine State Park and the Islands of Oakmont, which is Allegheny Island State Park. Those are our two most popular eco tours. And we've been doing those since the beginning. So they've just been getting better and better. And uh, those are our most popular options. Um, so we're going to continue to do that. And then First Waves has been expanding uh, as well. So like I said, we had those three different programs in uh, multiple counties throughout uh, southwestern PA. And we'd like that to spiral out. So um, we've got some exciting news coming very soon about the expansion. And, um, you know, we have a lot of partners and sponsors that have just made it, uh, you know, really an opportunity for us to get this to more people. So that's kind of what's coming next and uh, not quite ready to announce it just yet. But uh, we'll be working but it's closely. Be exciting, yeah, right? very it's exciting. Be exciting. Gotta stay tuned yeah. to Surf's Up Adventures because it's exciting happening. opportunities to expand this yes. education and the love of the water. Exactly, and there's opportunities for everyone, whether you're um, a river surfer, whether you're a photographer, um, an educator, filmmaker, uh, birders. We try to bring everyone that has uh, you know, a special skill set and we can kind of um, help allow them to kind of flourish in that environment. So they can teach, they can mentor the kids, they can help just clean up the trash and plant trees. So there's an opportunity for, you know, a wide range of people that, that want to get involved to uh, to experience that. And uh, we hope we make it fun too. We get you on a wave it on occasion. It's always fun. Yes, so that's kind of the goal. Fun. So if there are people out there watching this thinking, I'd really like to get involved in that. Yeah. I, I have this skill or maybe I just want to learn about this yeah. and, and I want to find a way to get involved, whether it's cleaning up uh, the rivers, whether it's being part of the education programs or the programs on the water or the filmmaking. Yeah. How do they get in touch with you? Yeah. So the best way, and that is my passion, is to give people those great experiences, uh, get you on the water, get you out with the kids filming. Um, and surfsubadventures.com is our website. That's where most of those are going to be posted. Um, First Waves also has its own website. It's firstwaves.org. And then uh, social media for all those, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so those are kind of the best ways. And you can always just reach out to, you know, either of us as well. Um, we're always, you know, always there to uh, kind of guide you and see where, where it might fit in. We're or, very encouraging. We're encouraging. <laughs> we get, come out to a SUP yoga class with fun. Allison. Yeah, we're fun. We'll, we'll take you to the best on-water yoga studio in all of Moraine. It's uh, my favorite studio. It's good, my yeah. My studio at Moraine on the water, that is my favorite studio, I can't lie. Yeah. Um, it is awesome. And if you want to sign up for any of those tours, of course, go to surfsupadventures.com and you can join us on the water and maybe you'll get hooked. Yeah. Like we are. Yeah. And I think it is a passion. It becomes your lifestyle. Um, and we talk about this with health and wellness on the show. Um, it's been it's been the goal of the series to encourage health and wellness and, and for people to realize it's really not that hard. Right. right? Health and wellness is doing things that you love. Um, being outside, going hiking, getting on the water. These are really pretty easy things. Yeah. Um, buying local, farm to table, you know, food, all of these things become much simpler. And then you find other people who are doing them and it just pushes you forward. Yeah. And you know, I think that's been our goal here and that's our goal on the water um, is to see you succeed, yeah. right? To see you succeed and then we love it when people love it as much as we do, right? I mean, Definitely. That's, that's the hope and that's part of what we're hoping for the future of Surf's Up Adventures, right? And yeah. First Waves is that that love will just spread and we'll see more people riding the waves with us four seasons. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, get you out Surf in the winter. Surf PA. <laughs> I, still, I still have yet to get you out in the winter time. I'd like to see you out there I'll, in the snow. I'll, I'll Maybe think about that. Make I'll it think happen. About, I'll think about that. I've, we've done it on the ice. We've done yoga on the ice for the That's show. That's cool. So, yeah, we'll see if we can get you out there on a board in the ice. Maybe. That's Maybe. what's next. It might be this year. <laughs> That's what's next. That's what's next. <laughs> well, Ian, I appreciate it. I'm glad that you are our last guest on Om Sweet Om and hope it is the start of many more things to come for both Surf's Up Adventures and for both of us. Thank so you, really thank you. I appreciate it. you having me. It's been amazing to be uh, to work with you in so many different aspects of water conservation, uh, paddleboard yoga, and you're, you've been a big inspiration to us and integral to our success. So congratulations for everything you've done and it really means a lot to be the last guest. Oh, so thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. It's hard, it's hard to say goodbye, yeah. but we know there's better things even coming. So we're gonna stay tuned and see what all of those things for you will be. Sounds good. So thank you. I appreciate it. Don't go away. We've still got yoga today. We're going to stay right here at Wood Street Park in Harmony. This is my hometown. So the last yoga has to be here. I will meet you in a moment on the mat.
we're back here in Wood Street Park in Harmony, Pennsylvania, right on the banks of the Conequinessing. And we're gonna do a little yoga today. We're gonna move a little. So for my last show, I wanted to do a classic Allison Vinyasa, right? The classic Allison flow. So if you come to my classes at the Center of Harmony or at Oxford Athletic Club, you are used to Allison flow, right? With funky music usually, but we're just gonna flow with the music of nature today because we're outside on such a beautiful fall day. I want you to bring it to the top of the mat and maybe you just take a moment at the top of the mat today for centering. I want you to take a deep breath in and then just slowly exhale those hands to heart center. Let's do another one. Nice deep breath, reaching up, exhaling those hands to heart center. One more, nice deep breath. Exhale those hands to heart center. This is a great way to start the morning, right? Just taking a couple of deep breaths, going outside. Even if you can get those five minutes in the morning, just to maybe do one or two sun salutations, take a deep breath. We know it starts the day out on the right note. We bring it up again. One deep breath. Exhale those hands to heart center. Inhale that right leg steps back. Big crescent lunge. Now we're not moving fast, but we start to get a little power in those poses, drawing the belly in. Take a nice deep breath in. Then we're gonna exhale, little humble warrior. Bring those arms down alongside. Nice deep breath all the way up. Warrior one, exhale. Strong arms, open it up, warrior two. I want you to hold that warrior two. Gaze out over that hand for five, four, three, two, and one. Let's flip the palm. Lean out over your leg and reverse it. Nice deep breath, reaching back. And then exhale. See if we could just cartwheel to the mat. Put those two feet into plank. Nice strong plank, drawing the belly in, pressing away from the mat. And just take it down through chaturanga. Scooping up into cobra and pressing it all the way back. Little downward facing dog. Maybe you inhale up onto the balls of the feet. Exhale, press those heels back. Inhale up. Exhale, press it back. Gazing between those two hands. Step up or jump. Take that big sun breath in. Bring it all the way up and exhale those hands to heart center. Let's inhale, left leg steps back. Nice deep breath. Maybe we take that humble warrior pressing into the mat, draw the belly in, arms come down alongside. Big breath in all the way up, warrior one. Exhale, let's open it out wide, warrior two. Little flip of the palm, lean out over your leg and reverse it. Nice deep breath, lots of reach. And then exhale, cartwheel it down, two feet into plank. Take it down through chaturanga, cobra, all the way back, down dog. Now gaze between those two hands, step up or jump. Big sun breath in. Maybe this time we take that swan dive down, forward fold, reach for the toes. Just let the body hang. Maybe that little shift from side to side. And then we just roll it back up one vertebrae at a time. Arms go overhead, 10 fingers to five. Exhale, bring those hands to heart center. And just take a couple of deep breaths here. So if you only have those five minutes in the morning, maybe just that one round of sun salutations starts the day out on a good note. Now, if we have a little more time, maybe we take it down to the mat, stretch out just a little bit more, taking a couple of rounds of cat-cow on the inhale, drop the belly, gaze forward. On the exhale, press into the mat, round the spine, lifting up. Inhale, drop the belly, gaze forward. Exhale, press into the mat. Round the spine, lifting up. Then just bring it to a neutral spine. 
Extend that right leg nice and long. Nice deep breath. Now maybe you come up on the left fingertips. Maybe that left arm goes forward. Nice deep breath. Reach it out long. Another one deep breath. Pressing away. Drawing the belly in. Lots of reach. One more nice deep breath. Reach it out. Then let's bring it back down. Tabletop. Extend that left leg nice and long. Maybe it's right fingertips. Maybe that right arm comes forward. Take a nice deep breath in. See if you can use that exhale. Reach for something just outside your grasp. Push the foot back. Another one. Nice deep breath. Lots of reach. You got it. One more deep breath. And then let's slowly bring it back down. There's that nice tabletop. Then we can tuck those toes underneath and we take it right back to that downward facing dog. And maybe you pedal the feet out. Put a little power into those feet today. Stretch out the legs. Maybe you nod the head up and down. Wag the tail. Then we can step, hop, or jump top of the mat. Take that big sun breath in. If we have that extra time, maybe we can add a little to that sun salutation. Let's inhale and step that right leg back. Nice big crescent lunge. Exhale, release, humble warrior. Taking those arms out to the side. Airplane wings. Little shift of the weight. Maybe you point the toe behind you. Maybe you let it rise up into airplane. Maybe we work those arms today. Can you inhale, press the palms together. Exhale, take it out wide. Inhale, press. Exhale, go wide. One more. Inhale, press. Exhale, go wide, reach it out, big wingspan. Bring the foot down, our arms go up, warrior one, get tall. And then exhale, let's take it wide, pressing into that warrior two. Nice deep breath, flipping the palm, lean out over your leg, reverse it, take a nice deep breath in, reaching it up. And let's just step those two feet together, top of the mat. Here's that big sun breath in. And a swan dive down, forward fold. Reach for the toes, tuck the chin to the chest. We let it rise up one vertebrae at a time, all the way up to standing. Bringing those hands to heart center. Let's try the other side. Inhale that left leg back. Crescent lunge. Exhale, release, humble warrior. Arms come out to the side. Beautiful airplane wings. As if you could press the chest away from your mat. Let's shift the weight. Point the toe or let it rise up into airplane. Take a nice deep breath in. I want you to press the palms together. Exhale, go wide, reach it out. Another one, let's press. And then exhale, nice big reach. One more. Inhale, press, and exhale, big reach, bring that foot back down, arms go up, warrior one, and then exhale, let's open up, warrior two, push the foot back, nice strong posture, flipping the palm, lean out over your leg, reverse it, nice deep breath, open the side body. And then exhale, let's take it to the mat this time. Cartwheel to the mat, two feet into plank. Holding that plank, nice deep breath in. Maybe you keep it right there for five, four, three, two, and one. Maybe take it halfway. Just work those arms a little, five, four, three, two, and one. Can you press it back up? Hold it there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Dig it down through Chaturanga. Scooping up into Cobra. 
Tuck those toes underneath. Let's press it all the way back. Downward facing dog. Gaze between the two hands. Step up or jump. Here's that big sun breath in. All the way up, 10 fingers to five. Exhale. Swan dive down. Give me two more, just like that. Inhale. Big breath in. And then exhale. Swan dive down. Tugging the chin to the chest. And we just let it rise up. One vertebrae at a time. I'm going to widen out those feet. Take them about hip width apart. Reaching the arms forward. So strong arms. Put a little energy in the fingertips. Let's sink it down into chair pose. Take a nice deep breath in. So we lengthen the spine. We use the exhale. We sink a little lower. Another one. Nice deep breath. Taking it lower. One more deep breath. Using that exhale and then just a big release. Nice forward fold. Let's inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, release. Forward fold. I'm going to plant the hands on the mat. Stepping that right foot back. Finding a nice low crescent lunge. I'm pressing into those toes. Maybe you can come up on the fingertips and lift the chest. Maybe those hands can come to the thigh. Maybe those arms can go all the way overhead. Interlace the fingers, reaching up. Nice deep breath. See if you can take it a little deeper. We're just tucking the tailbone underneath. Putting a lot of power into those feet. Nice deep breath. And then let's exhale. Bring those hands back down to the mat. Planting the right hand. Let's take that left arm up to the sky. Nice deep breath. Maybe you can gaze at that hand. Little twist. And then exhale. Bring it back down. Now both hands to that instep. Let's see if we can drop that shoulder underneath. Wrap your hand around your foot. Maybe you can play with the balance. Come up on the right fingertips. Maybe that arm goes out. Airplane wing. Maybe that left arm lifts. Who knows? Nice deep breath. And then exhale. Bring those hands back. And we're just going to walk into our straddle. Take a deep breath in, press to a flat back. And then exhale. Let's just drop the crown of the head down towards the mat. Now, if the head doesn't come down to the mat, that's okay. We're going to reach out for the ankles. Just deepen that forward fold. If tripod or tripod headstand is kind of your jam, we can go right to it from here. We just take the head down to the mat. Coming into our tripod, holding that tripod, and taking it up to headstand. Couple of nice deep breaths right here. Let's take one more. And then slowly coming back down. Pressing up to our straddle, and we're just walking to the other side of our mat. Finding that nice crescent lunge on the opposite side. Planting the left hand. Right arm goes up to the sky. Here's that big twist. Nice open chest. And then exhale. Bring the hand down. We've got both hands to the instep. Let's drop the right shoulder underneath. Wrap your hand around your foot. Maybe you come up on those fingertips. Maybe that arm goes out airplane wing. Maybe that other arm lifts. Take a nice deep breath in. We're using that exhale. Steady it. Then bring those hands back. Widen out the hands to frame the foot. 
and maybe that foot draws in back to the center just a little bit. Come up on the fingertips. Maybe you lift the chest. Maybe those hands come to the thigh. Maybe they go all the way overhead. Interlace those fingers. Take a deep breath in. Really press into the feet. I want you to feel that lift in the chest as you draw the belly in. Another deep breath and not holding the breath. Take it deeper as you strengthen that posture. And then bring those hands back down to the mat. We're gonna step those two feet together. Find that forward fold, inhale those hands. Halfway left, exhale release. Forward fold, inhale, halfway. Exhale, release. And just stepping the right foot back, walking into our straddle. We're back to the front, our mandala. I want you to press to a flat back. So really reaching the crown of the head forward, using that exhale, go ahead and fold. Inhale, flat back, exhale. Release. One more. Take that breath in, flat back, push away. And then exhale, release it. Then just tucking the chin to the chest. I'm just gonna rise up, I'm gonna hop those two feet together and take that big sun breath in all the way up, exhaling those hands to heart center. So we completed that mandala, right? A circle around the mat, symbol of oneness. We bring it back to the center. We're gonna try a couple standing postures today. Some of our favorite poses of the week. Let's try tree. Starting out in Tadasana, I want you to widen out. So any standing posture, we wanna press our feet into the mat. I want you to feel that energy rising up the legs. We draw the sides of the belly together. We lift in the chest, the neck, the jaw. There's a little lift in the crown of the head. We get a little taller. So all of those engagements are, are in place, right? Our full body engagements. Then we begin to try that posture. I want you to turn and put your focus on to that left foot, bringing the right foot to the instep. And maybe that tree stays right here. Really doesn't matter where that foot goes. We're trying to get those full body engagements in place. But maybe it can come to the shin. Maybe it can come to the thigh. Holding that posture. Maybe those arms go up. We can add that mudra. Thumb and index finger. Three fingers point away. Take a nice deep breath in. See if you can lift and lengthen the spine. Use that exhale. Root it to the mat. Another one, nice deep breath, lifting up, using that exhale. Then just slowly bring it back down. Let's take it to the other side. So shake out the hands, shake out the feet. And let's see if we can find that tree on the other side. It's not that hard when you've got the trees all around you, right? We're just gonna do what they do. If it sways in the breeze just a little bit, that's all part of being a tree. Take a nice deep breath in. See if you can lift those arms up. Maybe add that mudra. Deep breath. See if you can lift and lengthen the spine. We use that exhale to press into the mat. Tree roots us to earth, attaches us to heaven. Take a deep breath in. See if we can make it happen. One more. Deep breath. And then bring it back down, hands to heart center, shaking it out. Let's try one more standing posture today. Another fan fave. Let's see what we can do with half moon today. Taking that right leg, we're gonna bring it forward. I want you to hit that warrior two. So we've got a nice strong stance in warrior two. Again, a standing posture, pressing into the mat, letting everything rise up. We reach those arms out. Take a deep breath in. I'm just gonna bring that left hand to the hip. And then we're just gonna slowly begin to shift those shoulders forward just a little bit, shifting the weight. Maybe you can point the toe. Maybe you begin to split those palms. 
reaching up for the sky. Maybe that hand comes to the heart. Take a nice deep breath in. Let's see if we can steady it right there. Beautiful half moon. Breathe into that open chest. And then let's bring it back down. We're going to finish strong. Warrior two. There it is. And then bring it back to center. All ten toes come center. Maybe we take that deep breath in. Exhale those hands to heart center. Before we shift to the other side, just opening those arms out, turn the left toes. And we sink into our warrior two. Take a nice deep breath here. Steady that warrior two. And we start that transition of right hand to hip. Maybe we shift those shoulders forward just a little bit as if they're on a track. We don't want to drop the right shoulder. We just want to shift, maybe you point the toe. And you begin to let it rise up into half moon. Maybe that hand comes to the heart. Feeling that lift in the chest. Couple of nice deep breaths. You got it. And then we slowly bring it back down. We finish strong with that warrior two. Deep breath bringing it back to center all ten toes facing the front big breath in exhale those hands to heart center maybe you step those two feet together and we're just going to bring it down to the mat so coming to seated on the mat whichever way we want I want you to grab on just below the knees sit up nice and tall take those arms out to either side little upward facing boat slowly recline keeping that long spine maybe those legs come to 90 maybe they take that full V I'm gonna gaze up at the sky take a deep breath in let's hold it there for three breaths can you do another one nice deep breath making it stronger one more deep breath and then exhale butterfly the feet Round the back, let the crown of the head fall. You can even weave those arms underneath in butterfly. And then just slowly begin to rise back up. We're taking it down to the mat. Drawing those knees into the chest. Maybe we take those arms out wide. You can fold them over to the right side. Maybe that left leg extends. Take a breath here, little twist. Maybe you can gaze out over that opposite arm. And bringing it back in. Go ahead and grab onto those knees. Forehead comes to the knees, tight little ball. And open them up. Let's take them over to the left. Maybe that right leg extends. Maybe a gaze out over that opposite arm. And let's bring it back to center. One more little tight little ball. And then normally we would exhale out wide into our Shavasana and enjoy that little moment of peace in Shavasana. And as much as I love to enjoy that with you, I better come up today and say a few things about Om Sweet Om. First and foremost, I wanna thank my producer, Carmen. He's behind the camera today, but without his talent and vision, this show never would have happened. So I thank him with all of my heart. To all the folks at Armstrong that made it possible, thank you. I'm forever grateful to my husband, Chris, my kids, Nicholas, Dowron, and Christian. Thank you for supporting me as my schedule is always crazy and I love you all. And to all of you, thank you so much for watching our show, for inviting us into your homes, for doing yoga with me inside, outside, in your living room, four seasons of the year for the past five years. 
I really appreciate it. And I'm forever grateful for you as well. I hope you had fun. I hope you found some ways to improve your health and wellness and support our local community, because that's what it's all about. Let's take our hands out to either side. A nice deep breath in all the way up. We're gonna bring those hands to heart center. Gaze out over the fingertips, a moment of gratitude. Join me today in that moment of gratitude. I'm grateful for all of you. Thank you for watching Om Sweet Om. Thank you for letting me be a part of your lives. Find the light within you. Take it out into the world. Namaste. Mm -hmm.